Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new Preferences Data Store, which is the replacement for Shared Preferences. Shared Preferences got deprecated in the latest API version, so this is essentially just a new way of saving preferences in your app. So, what exactly is Data Store? Data Store is a data storage solution introduced by Google as a part of Jetpack. It's designed to replace shared preferences and offers a more efficient and safer way to handle small amounts of data in your Android applications. With Data Store, you can store key value pairs or typed objects with ease. Jetpack Data Store allows you to store key value pairs or typed objects with protocol buffers. It uses Kotlin coroutines and Flow to store data asynchronously, consistently, and transactionally. If you're currently using shared preferences to store data, consider migrating to Data Store instead. Our flow for using Data Store in the app is structured like this. First, we will show the splash screen. After that, we will land on the register screen. Upon entering the details and submitting the form, we will store all the data in Data Store and navigate to the home screen. Here's where our main task lies. The data displayed on the home screen will be retrieved from Data Store. In this way, we will implement Data Store in our app. We have already created the splash screen, register screen, and home screen UI. In this video, I will cover the complete implementation of Data Store in our app, focusing only on the data handling and not the UI part. So, without any further delay, let's start coding. First, let's add the data store dependencies. We have already created the splash screen, register screen, and home screen UI. As we need to store the name, phone number, email, and password, I have created a data class called User Details. The next step is to create a data store manager class, which will contain our data store name, initialization of data store, and functions to save and retrieve data from data store. Define constants and data store initialization. User data store. A constant defining the name of the data store. Preference data store. An extension property on the context object to initialize the data store instance using the provided name. User data store. Companion object with preferences. Keys. Companion object. Holds the preferences keys used to store and retrieve data in the data store. Email. Password. Mobile number. Name. Keys for storing email, password, mobile number, and name, respectively. Save data to data store. The save to data store function is a suspend function that saves user details to the data store. It uses context.preference.datastore.edit to modify the data store, setting values for email, password, mobile number, and name from the provided user details object. Each piece of user data is stored using its corresponding key, ensuring the details are saved correctly in the data store. This function allows for asynchronous data storage operations.
Retrieve data from data store. The get from data store function returns a flow of user details objects. It retrieves data from the data store using context.preferenceDataStore.data, which emits the current state of preferences. The map operator transforms the emitted preferences object into a user details object by extracting the values for email, name, and mobile number, providing empty strings as defaults if any values are missing. This ensures that the user details object is always populated with valid data. Clear data from data store. The clear data store function is a suspend function that clears all data in the data store. It uses context.preferenceDataStore.edit to modify the data store. Inside the edit block, it.clear is called to remove all key value pairs from the data store. This function enables asynchronous clearing of stored data. The code snippet initializes the data store manager within a composable function. Data store context retrieves the current context using local context.current. Data store manager is then instantiated with this context. Finally, app content is called passing this a register screen, preference data store, and data store manager as parameters to handle application content setup. The code snippet handles user registration state management in a composable function. A mutable state of false variable is registered is defined to track the registration status. Remember, coroutine scope creates a coroutine scope for asynchronous operations. The on register success lambda updates is registered to true upon successful registration. Using launched effect unit a side effect is triggered when the composable enters the composition, calling check register state, preference data store, to check and update the registration state. This ensures the registration status is verified and updated when the app starts.
This Kotlin suspend function checks if a user is registered by fetching preferences from preference data store. It retrieves the email from preferences and determines if it's non-null to set the is registered flag. It then calls the on result callback with the registration status. This code defines a Lambda function on logout that sets is registered to false and launches a coroutine to clear data from data store manger. This code checks if the user is registered using the is registered flag. If is registered is true, it displays the home page with on logout and data store manger parameters. If is registered is false, it shows the register page UI with on register success and data store manger parameters. On the register screen, after filling out the form and clicking submit, this code submits the user's data. It launches a coroutine to save the user's details, email, name, and mobile number to Data Store Manger using Save to Data Store. Once the data is saved, it calls the on register success. Callback. This line retrieves user details from Data Store Manger by collecting the latest data using Collect a State with an initial value of null. It keeps user details updated with any changes in the data store. After that, you can get the user's name, email, and mobile number using userdetails.name, userdetails.email, and userdetails.mobile number, respectively. Great! It looks like we've set up everything needed. Let's run the app now and see how it works.
Oh no, let's troubleshoot the issue to find out why the app is crashing after clicking the submit button. It seems like the data we retrieved from data store might be null. Let's add a null check. And that's it. We've successfully implemented Data Store in our Jetpack Compose application. We've covered how to save and retrieve user data, handle null checks, and ensure everything runs smoothly. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content. If you have any questions or run into any issues, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.